Hello, it's Mr. Omari here. Now that we've gone through all the archetypes, I thought we might go and spot some characters and see which archetypes they conform to. Okay, the one I really want you to be paying attention to is little Anakin Skywalker in this um, in this shot. He changes archetypes throughout the course of the six movies, but what I want you to concentrate on him in his boy form and see what he is, see what colours he's wearing, see if you can decide um, who he is. And by the way, you can probably work out what character, what archetype it is you can see behind him too. Next up, we have Young. Not, light, not dark hair, but not light hair, interestingly. Um, but, you know, very determined. You can probably work out what archetype that is. I'm not going to tell you at this point. Um, this ugly, scary looking dude with the bad teeth and the scary tattoos. You can probably work out what he does for a living, what archetype wise. I actually think this is interesting because he looks, I think you'd probably jump to thinking he's one type of archetype, but if you think about how he actually conducts himself and how much of what he does might be right or wrong, I think you might come up with something a little bit different. Next up, we have Lara Croft. Um, and again, you could rush into guessing what she was, but um, think about what she actually does, and I think you might um, come up with a different type of archetype. Uh, here we have young Keanu Reeves being... Um, oh, I can't remember his name. I want to say Nemo, but I know that's not right. From the Matrix films, Neo is what I meant to say. Uh, and he's a particular type of... Although, interestingly, his, co his clothes kind of disguise the archetype that he is. In actual fact, all of their clothes are running against their archetype. They're dressed like villains, but they're in fact far from villains. Next up, we actually talked about this during the, um, the earlier introductions, and it's fairly obvious what her archetype is. His archetype's interesting. He looks like a particular archetype for most of the um, eight films or seven books, but in the end we realise that he's in fact something else. So that's interesting. Sometimes we have to take, d depending on when we're looking at somebody, they might actually be fulfilling a different archetype, but see if you can decide what Snape is. Miss Piggy, I think you should be able to work out fairly quickly what archetype she is. Yoda, I think um, understand what archetype he is you can. Yes, I know that was dreadful. Um, Chewbacca, that's not a good photo of Chewbacca. Uh, I think it should be fairly obvious what uh, what type of archetype he is too. Uh, I almost said it then. In fact, it's something he shares with these two um, loons, these two hobbits. I think this one's actually a bit trickier. You have to look at what he does. The colours he's dressed in, the kind of vacant expression on his face give you a bit of a clue. But you need to think about the way he conducts himself to get a real sense of what character it is that Forrest Gump represents. Kermit, I think um, you could fall into thinking that he was a sidekick, but in actual fact his mission is somewhat different to that. And it's actually a mission that he shares with young Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So you might want to think about what, what their actions say about who they are. Uh, similar but different, we have Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford, in the Star Wars um, universe. Uh, think about what what type of character he is. He, the way he dresses um, gives you a bit of a hint. It's the broken wand here that gives you a hint about young Ron Weasley. Uh, I'll leave you a second to think about what archetype he represents. I probably don't need to say too much here, I reckon you can work that one out. Again, I think that the clothes and the firearms make this one fairly obvious. Uh, this is a dyed in the wool. You know, you, you couldn't get him wrong. He's got dark hair, but everything about him radiates goodness. You can work out who that is. This one's interesting because you might think being in The Godfather, this is Vito Corleone, that he is in fact a destroyer. But I would actually suggest that if you know the film itself, he is in fact quite a different archetype. I think this is one of the cleverest things about The Godfather in that he is in fact only destroying is a small part of what he does. However, it's not a small part of what everybody does. Hermione Granger does different things in different films. So depending on when you're looking at her, she's a different archetype. Uh, I think that Batman is really interesting because I think they're trying very hard for him to be a particular archetype, but I'm not sure that they're always successful. I think that it's very, very clear what type of archetype Luke Skywalker is, and I also think you'd be hard-pressed not to work out Fozzy Bear. So I might come back and give you the answers in another short video, but see if you can go through this and work those all out for yourself.